right, welcome. We're giving this uh, this Facebook Live thing uh, another try and see how we do. We're, uh, we're hoping to come to you every Friday at one o'clock on Facebook Live as soon as I figure out all the URLs and the live streaming keys and the paired coding and all that stuff. All right, let's get my timer going here. All right, you're listening to the Celtic Coach Radio Show where science, spirituality, and self discovery meet. Oh, yes. Self discovery meet. Where is that microphone? I'm going to pull over here. I'll try and keep it out of the, uh, I'll try and keep it out of the way of the, uh, the camera. How does that sound? That doesn't look too bad. All right. Okay. Let's, uh, let's jump in. Today, we're going to be talking about the Irishman's Guide to Not Being Broke or Poor for the Rest of Your Life. Now, I know that when a lot of people hear that, they think, okay, that kind of makes sense. But what do you mean about not being broke and poor? Well, I'm, I'm, today I'm going to be reading from my book called The Irishman's Guide to Not Being Broke or Poor. And... Most self-development, self-improvement programs and talks will tell you how to have a great life, how to be abundant, how to unleash your inner abundance. And, and I thought I'd take a kind of a different approach, an Irish approach, which is, you know, in, in the coaching world, it's called stating things in the negative. But... Uh, I thought I'd take a, a negative topic, but give you positive content. Hopefully that will make sense. All right. So today we're going to talk about a few different things. Now, if you're listening in, you're listening on the Celtic Coach Radio Show. Um, of course, if you're listening on the radio, you're picking us up at 92.5 FM, Cows Radio, the greatest radio station on the planet. We are Cows community radio. So welcome everyone. Listen in, listen in, listen in. Okay, but first, my hot chai, which I promised the listeners not to slurp on the radio, which I will do my best. The microphones are pretty sensitive, so who knows? All right. We're going to be talking today about how to make money and stop pleasing people. I'm a professional life coach, and I also run a program for coaches on help, helping them build their business. And one of the things that they get caught up with all the time is trying to please people. So I'm going to be talking about that today. Stop trying to please everyone and you'll start to make money. Because after all, the show is about making money. We're also going to be talking about some different mindsets. We're going to be talking about working for a living, the victim mindset. A lot of people say, well, I have to work, Dermot. You don't understand. And I have to do this and I have to do that. And I'm going to talk about, about a different way of approaching that, a different way of, of looking at that. We're also going to be talking about life happens to me versus life is created through me. Now, growing up in an alcoholic home, I, um, I, I often thought for a long time that life was happening to me and that I had no control over life. And as a child, you pretty much don't. But as you get older as an adult, you have a lot of control over what you say and what you do and how you behave and the habits you create and the personality you express and the things that you the, uh, create in the world. And so we're going to talk about that. All right. Uh, I'm, of course, I'm reading from my book, The Irishman's Guide um, to Not Being Broke or Poor for the Rest of Your Life. And so I'm reading from the book, read from the book last week. This week is part two. We're also going to be looking at uh, the, di the distinction between I don't have a choice and I create my own choices. Now, a lot of people say I don't have a choice in this job, Dermot. I have to do it. Or I don't have a, I don't have a choice in my relationship. I have to be here. Or I don't have a choice about how much money I make because the government takes it and the IRS takes it and the neighbor's dog next door takes it and I don't have a choice. 
We're going to talk about the distinction between the two. And if we have time, we'll get to this distinction called, I can't do that because. There's so many people in the world, they want to do amazing things. They want to create amazing projects. And they say, I can't do it because. And it's actually BS, it's blarney. It's, it's never about I can't do it because. You fill in the blanks, because I'm too old, because I'm too young, because I'm too stupid, because I don't have the money, I don't have the skills, don't have the time, don't have the personality, don't have the confidence, don't have the courage. The list is endless. Although there's, there's typically nine of them, uh, which I actually just stated all nine of them there. Um, all right, so let's, uh, let's jump in. Welcome everyone, welcome to the Celtic Coach Radio Show. All right, we're gonna be coming to you here live on Facebook every Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific time. Not specific time, but Pacific. That's how an Irishman says Pacific, Pacific. Okay, all right, here we go. Stop trying to please everyone. Now I'm gonna read from my book and then I'll, I'll um, it's not published yet. This is just the uh, finished uh, first draft. And so I'm, I'm sharing with, with, uh, with all of you out there. Um, I don't think it's gonna change much. I mean, it'd be polished a little bit. The editor will probably throw in a few ju jokes in a story or two. But I think most of it will be as, as you hear it today. All right. And the book will be coming out here in two to three months once it gets edited and all that good stuff. Stop trying to please everyone and you'll make money. At a very young age, I learned it was conditioned to please everyone. At home, I pleased my parents so they never got upset with me. At school, I learned to please the teachers so they would, uh, so they would send me home with good report cards. That didn't happen. Um, within my family, I played the joker, always making everyone laugh so they would like me and not cast me out of the clan. And if my family are listened, I know you would never do that. And so on and on it went, pleasing and pleasing all day long. Like overthinking, pleasing is another way we try to keep ourselves safe. Pleasing wins approval and keeps the wolf away from the door. <laughs> As children, we don't know that we are learning and playing the pleasing game. Actually, after that joke, I should have, I should have had a drum roll. Just trying to get in some of these special effects here for the show. As children, we don't know that we are learning and playing the pleasing game, but slowly it becomes apparent in our early teens. We start saying no and stop saying yes. And this is usually where the trouble really begins. And for anyone with teenagers out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, pleasing people is a natural part of the learning process. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. In much the same way as saying no is. The problem begins to present themselves when we use this same tactic as an adult to either get what we want or get what we don't want. We start saying yes to things that we don't really want to do. And we say no to the things we really want to do. We start to feel the discomfort of lying to ourselves and others. And all in all, in an effort to keep the peace, to not ruffle any feathers and to not upset the powers that be. The word please has the word ease within it. I don't think this is an accident. When I try to please people, the intention, sometimes hidden, is to put them at ease so that I feel at ease myself. I'm trying to please them so that I can ease myself. Hands up, hands up, who's done that? Oh yeah, yeah, there's lots of us. All right. using my new, my new journal holder here. It's very cool. Um, but at ease is never something another person can give me. Ease is what is natural to me. When I'm not caught up in all my thinking about pleasing people, I'm at ease. I bring my own at easeness to a situation. 
Another person does not own my at-easeness. Therefore, they can never make me feel at ease. People don't have the power to make you feel anything, although it can really feel that way. Trust me, I know. They are not superhuman. They don't have that kind of power, even if I think they do. For years, I innocently thought that other people owned and controlled my peace of mind. But that simply is not true. I know that's a big, big pill to swallow, dear listeners. Every experience that happens to us must first come through us via thought. Every experience is neutral and without meaning until it goes through the filter of thought. We then assign, using thought, meaning to it. Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. And I'd like to amend that slightly. Sorry, Descartes, if you're listening in. I think, therefore, I assign meaning. Or, I think, therefore, I feel. We live in the feeling of our thinking. When we think about something, we, have, we, we create feeling. Or you could say, every, everything that you think about, oh, I think I'm happy, I think I'm great, I think I'm wonderful, there's a feeling attached to that thought. One of the things we can do with thought is we can think about it. Thoughts come in, we grab one, we start thinking, and we start feeling that thinking. And then whatever that feeling is that we're feeling, we make meaning about it. Oh, she really annoys me and he really gets under my skin. We start feeling that and it's because blah, 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 they are this and they are that. We're always, ass we're always assigning outside meaning to an inside feeling. Okay. Where was I? La, 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 la. Okay. Every experience is neutral and without meaning until it goes through the filter of thought. We then assign meaning to it. Descartes said, I think, therefore I am, and I'd like to amend it to, I think, therefore I feel. And just in case you're wondering, I know I've already read that. <laughs> I just figured that out. I'm not saying that pleasing people is wrong. I like to please people. But what I am saying is that if you're using pleasing as a way to make yourself feel more at ease, then you, my friend, are barking up the wrong tree. Because in the moment you play the game, you have lost sight of the fact that your peace, your at easeness, is who you already are. But for all your thinking, you are naturally, innately, organically at ease. You don't need anyone's approval to be or feel that which you already are. And that's no blarney. All right, let's, let's kind of unpack that a little bit. If it's true that, that, that people can't make us feel a certain way. Now, people can say horrible things to us and we and, and the thinking then starts, oh, that person is terrible. How could they say that to me? I'm a really good person. And they say I'm a horrible person. And we feel our thinking. But the feeling, that, that, that yucky, yucky feeling is not coming from the person. There's no way people do not have that power unless they're, you know, Charles Xavier and they can go into your mind and go, okay, feel like crap, feel like crap. You know, the way he does his thing with his, with his hands, you know, he can do that, but, but most people can't make you feel anything because the feeling comes from your thinking. And so what you're feeling is the thinking about that person. Now it's, trust me, it's not nice for anyone to say horrible things to you. I get it. But the distinction here we're making is that that feeling is not coming from that other person. They're not making you feel that. You're doing that on your own. And that's a really wonderful thing to remember because we're talking about money here today. And part of the problem with money is that we think money is great for, 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 for feelings. Money was not designed, which I'm going to talk about in the next chapter here. Money was not designed to fix your feelings. Money was designed to buy stuff, to either buy a product or a service. That's it. Nothing else. So when we're constantly looking outside, trying to please people, if you're trying to build a business and in, in, instead of, uh, I have no idea what that was, um, instead of serving people, you're pleasing them. You're not going to have a great business. Now, I see, I see this all the time in coaching. 
because coaches come to coaching because they want to serve people. Um, but when they start, when they start looking into business building, they start um, pleasing people. Oh, I don't want that person to think ill of me, Dermot. I don't want that person to think like I'm creepy. I don't want that person to think that I'm salesy or, or you know, markety or things like that. I don't want that person to um, think I'm trying to get something from them. And so coaches move into this thing of pleasing people. And um, I got to tell you, it's, it's a pretty horrible place to be in because what happens is you end up, you end up trying to please people, not make any money, dishonor how you're feeling, dishonor your commitments, your agreements to yourself, and you start going down the road of yes, 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 yes. So question. What, are you, what in your life are you saying yes to that you would like to say no to? What in your life would you like to say no to that you're saying yes to? It can be a person, it can, or it can be a thing that people are asking you to do or a thing that you're currently doing. A lot of people come to me for coaching and they say, oh, Dermot, I'm in this job and I, I have to do it. And it's like, does someone have a gun to your head? Well, now I got to pay the bills. Well, would you be interested in, 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 in moving out of it at some point? Oh, no, that's too scary, Dermot. No, I can't. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have to, you know, get through it. And so they dishonored themselves. And, and, and they're now pleasing whatever it is, the job, the people in the job, or money itself. A lot of people are, are pleasing money. I know, I coach a lot of them. Come and say, I want to be a coach. I, I want to get out of this job into this. I want to have a part-time, I want to have a full-time business. But I'm afraid, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that, I don't want to upset people. Change is scary for people. I remember when I left Ireland and my mother begged me not to go. I was young. I was, well, I left home when I was 17, I think, and I left uh, Dublin then. I went to the city and then I went from the city to Germany. I think I was 19 or 20 when I, when I went to Germany. I was like, I'm ah, too young to be doing that. It's like, had to go. Change is scary for people. All right, so where in your life are you saying yes when you'd like to say no? What is it you're saying no to in yourself that you'd like to say yes to? What's the question your heart is begging you to know? What's the question your heart is begging you to get the answer to? What's the question your life wants you to answer? Another way of asking that question is, what's the thought that you don't allow yourself to think? It comes in, oh, I'd like to have that. No, 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 this is not a good time. No, 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 we, we can't do that, that's too scary. What's, th what's the thought that you don't allow yourself to have? You don't allow yourself to think. All right, let's, uh, let's uh, play a little bit of music and then uh, we'll be right back. Stay tuned, everyone. To listen to the Celtic Coach Radio Show where science, spirituality, and self-discovery meet. We'll be right back. We're talking about the Irishman's Guide to not being broke or poor for the rest of your life. Stay tuned, everyone.
Hi, welcome back everyone. Had to throw that in there. All right. A lot of people, you know, when I'm, when I'm talking about, and just joined us, welcome. You listen to the Celtic Coach Radio Show, where science, spirituality, and self-discovery meet. Today, we're talking about the Irishman's Guide to Not Being Broke or Poor for the Rest of Your Life. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? All right, I'm, I'm, I'm reading a few chapters from a book that I've just completed, um, and will be on the bookshelves here, I suppose, in the next couple of months, once I get my... Uh, get my you know what in gear and, 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 and get a cover on it and so on and so on. All right. The proper use of money. Now, this is probably one of those chapters that you gonna, I would encourage you to listen to this talk, all 56 minutes of it, um, again and again, because what I'm talking about here is, is a little bit radical. And I don't mean to try to impress you with that, but we live in a world that tells us that the more stuff you have, the more things that you buy, the more things that you own, the happier you will be. Now, we all know on some kind of a conscious or an unconscious level, that's cod's wallop. It's blarney. Rubbish. Right? Which means BS in Irish. Cod's wallop or blarney. And we all know that on, a, on, a, on, a, on, on some kind of a level. But it doesn't stop us from going out and buying the biggest TV and the biggest television and spending all our money and getting more money and worrying about when we don't have money. Um, so let's talk about the proper use of money. What was money designed back in the days when it was conch shells and um, salt and uh, solarium? That's where salary came from. Solarium, the salt, salt mines that started off in Europe, I think, in uh, uh, in Switzerland somewhere, I think, um, you know, when they were, when buckskins, that's where the buck comes from, buckskins, because they were using, they were trading buckskins. And then it went on to metals, precious metals, silver, gold, bronze, all of that stuff. All right. There was even a time when, 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 when bat, or, or what was it? Was it guana? Guana poop was uh, uh, was was like huge bat bat poop I think and guana poop was uh, quite expensive. Who knew? All right, the proper use of money. Money can buy you a plant or a tree, but it cannot give you the feeling of being in nature. That feeling comes from you, not from the tree, or from the money you spent in purchasing the tree. Money can buy you a new car, but it cannot give you the feeling of freedom, success, or confidence, because that feeling comes from your thinking and not from the car. If that were true, everyone who buys a new car would have the same feeling, and if the feeling truly came from the car, you would get the feeling every time you looked at or drove the car. But you and I both know that that great feeling you felt when you first bought the new car faded over time, and the reason is simple. Your thinking about that lovely automobile changed over time. Car never changed. I mean, you may have changed at the tires, but the car never changed. Your thinking about the car subsided. Oh, yeah, that was, nah, that was great. No, no, now I need something else. The car didn't change you. Your thinking about the car over time changed. Now, what I'm trying to say here is that no person, place, or thing, and yes, the money is included in that, uh, can give you a feeling. We think it does because it's our thinking that gives us the feeling, not the money. Now, this is a rather another big pill to swallow. Horse tranquilizer size, I would say. Money is great for buying a car, but it's lousy for fixing feelings. Money is great for paying for a massage, but lousy for filling an emotional gap. Just ask any financially wealthy person. Money is very useful in acquiring the services of a therapist, but it is the therapy that does the healing, not the money that paid for it. Okay. For many year, years, I used money to fix my perceived broken life. 
the empty feelings of being not successful, not confident, not good enough, not smart enough, fill in the blanks. And wanting to show my old man as my dad, what a great guy I was. But money was never designed to do any of that. Money cannot impress people. It would take me till the ripe old age of 50 to begin to see that I, to, to begin to see that. I suppose every insight has its own timeline. The idea or lie that things have feelings built into them was sold to us at a very young age. Telefe television has not been kind in this department. In the 80s growing up, you would see an average of, I think it was three ads per day telling you to buy this product, you know, and you'll feel good about it. Kids today on average see anywhere from 700 to 1200 ads per day telling them the same thing. Although the ad companies have mastered this process and the lie is sold as very compelling truth. Watch five minutes of television and you know what I mean. So what is the proper use of money? Money like buckskins, salt, conch shells, and various other objects were used to facilitate the exchange of goods and services, period. Money was never intended to fix feelings, give you confidence, get people to like you, show off, make people love you or respect you or think you're cool in any way, shape or form. Money can't buy you happiness and it certainly can't buy you a great life, but we all wanna find out for ourselves. And I highly encourage you to go out and experiment for yourself after all. Everything in this book is my truth, but the real question is, what's true for you? Now, I know that money can't make me happy, but that doesn't stop me from going out and buying a new car or new equipment for my office or you know whatever it might be, a, a, a new fountain pen that I just got for my birthday. Would you like to see it? Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me show you my new pen here. This has got nothing to do with the show, by the way. This is my new pen. It's a cross pen. It's a rollerball pen. Wonderful, wonderful pen. And it has a, and on it there, I don't know if you can see that. It says creativity at work. Where is it? Creativity at work. Happy birthday. Love Shay. All right. Um, that has got nothing to do with the show, but I wanted to show you my new pen. So I know that on a fundamental level that, you know, money doesn't make me happy, but I don't mind buying nice things because I like nice things. Um, but I always keep a part of my consciousness. I always keep a part of my attention knowing that I'm not buying, that this thing is not giving me a feeling. And if it does, if you think it does, it's short-lived because you're thinking it, but that thing is short-lived. The feeling is always coming from our thinking, not from the item, not from the person, not from the place. And you know, it's good to know that. It's good to observe that because it slows you down. You don't, you don't, I don't binge shop, not that I ever did really, but um, I, I, I don't do the uh, on the spot buying. I think about things, so I really need this. How will this support my life? How will this be a benefit of, to my life? How will this make my life better? How will this serve my business? How will this um, serve others? How will this help others? How will this, be of benefit to my family, to my friends, to my partner, whoever it might be. And I look at things like that before I go, no, I want it, I need it, I need it. I gotta fill this gap, I gotta fill this, I gotta fill this hole. All right, all right, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's move on. We'll, we'll, we'll take a little music break just for the heck of it. And we'll be right back in 30 seconds. Stay tuned. Welcome back. 
back, everyone. You're listening to the Celtic Coach Radio Show, where science, spirituality, and self-discovery meet. If you're listening um, live on Facebook, hello. If you're listening on all those other, I, you can get it on my website, thecelticcoach.com, SoundCloud, iTunes, just put in the Celtic Coach. Um, or you're listening on 92.5 FM, F for Frank, M for Matilda, and that's Cows Radio. You can also pick us up online at cows.fm the best radio station on the planet all right we're talking about money and we're talking about making it understanding it looking at it in a different way so that we don't become consumed by it and my whole book is really about how to make money but how to make money in a way that's unique to you how to make money in a way that doesn't kill your well-being. Most people are working from this place of, of there's, there's two things. There's work ethic and there's success ethic. And work ethic is pound the floor, pound the floor, make it work, make it work. Hard work gets you everywhere. And success ethic basically says, and this is from the work of Robert Holden, very, very fascinating guy, one of my mentors. And, and, and he said that um, there's a difference between work ethic and success, success ethic. Success ethic is more about inspired action. It's more about slowing down and, and, and looking at what you want to create. It's about creating results, but from a, a place of of, as Yogananda says, calmly active and actively calm. Big, big, big difference. So, which brings us to our next chapter, which is working for a living, the victim mindset. All right, here we go. We all choose to work for a living. Some people may read that line and say, I choose to work. You mean I have to work for a living. It's nice for the people who get to choose. Whether we are conscious of it or not, in every moment of every day, we are making choices. And going to work or not going to work is a choice. You don't understand, Dermot. I have to go to work. I have to put food on the table for my family. I have to make money. Maybe you don't, but I do. Now, I totally understand that. I get that. I've, 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 I've had many times in my life where I was living from the have to. But here's the thing about the have to. <clears throat> have to implies that there's no choice, that you don't have a choice. And is that really true? You can choose not to go to work. There's consequences, of course, for that choice. But you always have that choice, regardless of the consequences. You always have that choice. For every action you take, there is a choice you make. I think I heard that somewhere. And now, this may all be semantics. But let's look at it in a different way. When I was doing work that I didn't enjoy, and there were many, I used to uh, I used to work the night shift at a gas station, and I would, I would just I would constantly be falling asleep on the, and I'd get this big bang on the window, which scare the hell out of me. Hey, put on the pump! And uh, it was in Germany, so it was in German. So I was like, what the hell? Am I still in a dream? Who's speaking German? Who speaks German in my dreams? <laughs> um, it was very disorientating, I have to say. All right. So when I was doing work I didn't enjoy, I would quite often complain to anyone who would listen um, that I have to do this because I have to eat. And now in my life, I'm at a place, and I'm not rubbing it, I'm not rubbing it in, uh, where I choose my work. I don't have to do anything I don't want to do. If you want to put food on the table, then having money is very helpful. It may be hard to imagine that in any given life uh, circumstance, you can choose how you want to experience it. That was certainly the case for me. All the bad stuff in life happened to me. And the good stuff happened for me every now and then when I was lucky. The look of the Irish. Uh, we are in every moment of life choosing what meaning to assign to an experience via thought. 
I think this is a good experience. I think this is a bad experience. I think, therefore, I feel. Therefore, I assign meaning to that feeling. I think, I think, and then I think some more. There's something I want to share with you that I learned from my coach, the incredible Mr. Steve Chandler. And if you're listening, hello, Steve, that I think may be helpful here. It's a distinction between the victim mindset and the owner mindset. Many thanks to Steve for sharing this with me. Mindset is not a negative or a positive thing. It's simply the way we use thought to make meaning of our experience. Let me say that again, because that's really important. Mindset is not a negative or positive thing. It's simply the way that we use thought. Thought comes in, we start thinking about it, we feel it, and we make meaning of that feeling. So mindset is not a negative or positive. It's simply the way we use thought to make meaning of our experience. Now, there's two distinctions. One is victim mindset and the other is owner mindset, or you could call it creator mindset, or I like to call it learning mindset. You have the victim mindset and you have the owner or the learning mindset. And the victim mindset says, life happens to me. I don't have a choice. I can't do that because of this, because of her, because of him, because of them, because I have to. Why me? Everything is black or white in the victim's mindset. I'm not that kind of person. I'm not smart enough. I'm not perfect enough. Uh, all, the victim is always worried about themselves. What will people think of me? What will they say about me? Life is too hard. And the victim always says, my past determines my future. In other words, I had a really crappy childhood, and that's why I'm, a, I'm messed up. Now, I had a really crappy childhood, too. But I made choices, and some of them were made for me just out of pure pain and misery. Uh, life has a way of doing that. I chose to not make those ex past experiences my present moment life. And that's very different. It's a very different way of living. Now, that's the owner mindset says life is not doesn't happen to me. It's created through me. I create my life through me. I, I feel my life through me. I think, therefore, I feel. I'm feeling life through me. It's not coming at me and, and happening to me. And why is all this crap happening to me? We make meaning about what life throws at us. What life throws at us, though, is neutral. The day is neutral. Money is neutral. Everything in life is neutral. We assign meaning to it. Um, the owner... The owner the owner uh, mindset or learning mindset says, I can do that. I get to do that. The victim says, why me? The creator mindset says, why not me? Victim mindset says, everything is black or white. It's this or it's this. I don't see any gray. It's either black or white. You're either right or wrong. It's left or right. And the owner mindset says everything is neutral until I assign meaning to it. Victim mindset said, I'm not that kind of person. The owner says, I'm my own person. I get to create my own life. I get to do life on my terms. I get to create my experiences and then take full responsibility for them. Victim mindset doesn't take responsibility. Says, no, no, that, that's happening to me. The, uh, the victim mindset says, I'm not smart enough. I used to have that. I'm not smart enough. I'm stupid. My old man used to call me stupid. And I took that on as truth. Instead of just taking it on like social media, fake news. Um, and so the victim mindset says, I'm not smart enough. And the owner mindset says, I'm willing to learn. And that took me a long time to get to that place to where I was willing to learn because I, I, I really did feel like I was stupid for a long time. Um, victim mindset said, I'm not perfect enough to have a great life. I'm not perfect enough to be able to do that well. I'm not perfect enough to be able to go out and ask for that or create that or, or step into that. And, and the owner mindset says, perfection is not needed. You don't need to have a perfect life to enjoy your life. 
You don't need to have uh, everything perfect in order to have a wonderful life. You just got to be willing to go out and live your life. The victim says, what will, what will people think of me? And the learning mindset says, what people think of me is none of my freaking business. I learned that one in Al-Anon, Children of Alcoholics. It's AA, but for Children of Alcoholics, um, 20 years ago. I used to worry all the time, but what will people think of me? Oh, what do people think about me in this room? Everything was about me, 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 me. The owner mindset says, what, what people think of you is none of your business. As the great Yogananda said, keep your eyes on your own plate. Don't worry about what other people are reading. The, uh, the victim mindset says, I, I, I can never get ahead. I just, every time I try something, it just falls flat on my face. Every time I do something, it just doesn't work out. So why bother anymore? And, and the owner mindset says, I slow down to get ahead. I slow down to look at my life. I slow down. I ask myself better questions. And when I ask myself better questions, I get better answers. The owner mindset says, I slow down so that my business can speed up. I slow down to ponder what's the next move. How can I make my business better? Where, where does my business need more time and attention? The victim mindset says, life is too hard. And trust me, I know this one because sometimes in my life, I just, I would cry. Too hard. So I get that. I'm not belittling that feeling because I've had times in my life where, oh my God, my life was just, it, it was pretty, it was not easy. Oh God, it was not easy. But the learning mindset says, hard is what I bring to life, which means that li if life is neutral, then, and, 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 and something arises, an event, an experience, we call it a problem. And I get to look at that in a way that's calm. Like Einstein said, if I had an hour to solve a problem, I'd spend 55 minutes on the question. And so when we slow down and look at life and we bring ease to solving a problem, then, then that problem becomes easy. What I, what I found in my life is that, you know, the more I try to push things, the more I, I bring a hard mindset. Now, I'm not talking about, oh, so I need to think easy thoughts, Dermot. No. When you're faced with a challenge, when you're faced with a problem, instead of reacting to it, instead of like, okay, I got to fix this, right? We're, we're, we're a society of fixers. Everything's got to be fixed. Solve this problem. Fix this problem. But we can take a step back and take on the learning mindset. And we can look at, hey, so what, what needs to happen about this? How is this a gift? How is this an opportunity? What's the question here that will solve this problem? What's the question that's wanting to be asked here? What's the answer here that doesn't have a question? That's the way to look at problems. But most of us look at problems, oh, it's a problem. <laughs> right? We all love gifts, but the things that we don't like, we call them problems. <laughs> John Lennon says, life is what happens when you're making plans. That is for sure. And I think problems, problems are what happens when, when, when you're looking at life through the, through the victim mindset. Now, does that mean that life isn't impactful and difficult? Yeah, absolutely. Of course. You know? A smooth life doesn't necessarily mean a great one. A lot of people that have money and time and everything, and you think they'd have it smooth, and they, they, don't, they don't like their lives. I, I know because I've, I've coached them. Um, and, you know, the victim mindset says, I don't have the time. Oh, Dermot, yeah, it's good for you. You have the time to do this and do that and write books and do your radio show and do all these. you got the time, Dermot. I don't. You're not me. And, and the learning mindset says, um, I create time. Like, have you ever noticed that when, when, when you have something you really love to do, like I love to write. I'll sit in the morning with my journal. <laughs> you can see all my journals back there. That's only like 
this fraction of them. Um, and I love to sit and write. And because I love to do that, every morning I make time to do that. I create time to do that. I don't have to do it. And sometimes I don't have the time because there's a lot going on, the meeting with clients or got up late or whatever. But I carve out or create a little time during the day because it's really important to me. Have you noticed the things you love to do like eat and sleep and have a beer in the evening and watch TV in the evening? You create time for those things. Even though you might say, well, I don't have the time. But we create time for the things that are important. We create time for the things that matter most to us. And the things that don't really matter to us or we don't assign value to or a whole lot of meaning to, we, we, we say we don't have the time for those. But we create time. We create time to get up in the morning, to go brush our teeth, to have a bowel movement, to wash our face, to have a shower, to walk, to run, to jog, whatever we're doing. We create time. Never about not having the time. It's about what are you creating your time and using it for? All right, everyone, let's take a, uh, a little break. I'm gonna play a little bit of music. I'm gonna walk outside and do you hear that? There's a woodpecker that has decided that this is his home and he's burrowing holes in my, um, can you hear him? Maybe you can't hear him, but I can hear him. So I'm gonna play a little bit of music and then I gotta go bang on the wall so that he can uh, fly away. And <laughs> He only comes when I'm doing my radio show. It's a, hilarious. It's like, oh, Friday's one o'clock, he's doing his radio show. Okay, time to uh, head on over there and start pecking at the wood. He's probably got 20 holes in the fucking wood up there. And I don't have the heart to like electrocute him or you know do something like that or blow him up with some dynamite. So I just let him do his thing and I'll do my thing. All right, I'm gonna play some music and I will be right back. So stay tuned, everyone. <laughs> All right, welcome back, everyone. You're listening to the Celtic Coach Radio Show, where science, spirituality, and self-discovery meet. If you're listening to us on iTunes, SoundCloud, CelticCoach.com, uh, YouTube, you can pick us all up there. Just go to Celtic Coach, and um, I usually po I post all the shows on on those different platforms, so you can listen to those shows and lots of prior shows. You can go to CelticCoach.com and um, go to radio show, weekly shows. And there's also wonderful interviews in there that I've done with some incredible people. Um, on the 27th, I'm gonna record it on the 20th and, um, oh, actually, I know I'm gonna do it live. I'm gonna have it live on, on uh, Facebook on the 20th. Stephen McGee is gonna be here at 1 p.m. on November 20th. And we're gonna be talking about um, leadership going to be talking about how does the average Joe and Mary be a leader in their own lives. And if, you, if you're a company or you're a small business owner, we're going to be talking about that as well in terms of leadership. So definitely join us for that. Stephen McGee, he's, he's a pretty amazing guy, I have to say. Very, very impressed. All right. What do we got? Just looking at the time here. Okay. Okay. So I'm hoping this is helpful. I'm going to make some of these distinctions to, to I'm going to try and I want to pick out a few. So these distinctions that I'm talking about, I'm going to, I, I, I went into them in detail. Um, so I want to see which ones would be very helpful for you in terms of money. Okay. Here's one that comes up a lot for, for my clients when I ask them to, Hey, how do you want to make money? And they tell me about their dreams and they tell me about their desires and they say, oh, I want to do this, Dermot, I want to do that. And then you'll see this happen. 
but I can't do it. And I said, why can't you do it? I can't do it, Dermot, because blah, 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 blah. <laughs> So let's talk about that, because that's a really good one. All right, I can't do that because versus I can do that because. I can't is a choice. I can is a choice. And they have nothing to do with outside circumstances. In my past, I would often say, I can't do that because I don't know how to, I'm not smart enough, I don't have the time, I don't have the resources, the money, confidence, yada, 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 you fill in the blanks. Our thoughts about whether we can or can't mean nothing except the meaning that we give to them. When you're caught up in a thought, in a thought storm of whether you can do something or you can't do something, your inner creativity, your well of infinite ideas is covered with the lid of overthinking. Anytime you're trying to get a, you're, you're trying to think something and you're, you're forcing yourself to overthink it, wisdom is shut off. That's why people are like, oh, I'm really overthinking this. Maybe I should stop. And it's like, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Whether I can or can't is just a thought. When you begin to see the truth of that for yourself, your life will transform before your very eyes. You don't have to work hard at changing your can't to a can. So a lot of people tell you, oh, you gotta change that can't to a can. And that doesn't really work. You just need to start seeing that both the can and the can't are made of thought. When you notice that the big black dark person that follows you around when you're outside is just your shadow, you instantly stop believing it's real. The same is true for your can or can't. In this, in this, in this, we'll just talk with the can't. Same is true for your can't. When you see it's made up of thought, you are free to choose again and again. Start to notice when you're stuck in the I can't thoughts. And notice the feeling that you have attached to it. I can't do that because, and notice the feeling that comes with that thinking. Treat your stuck or I can't thoughts in the same way you would a loud neighbor making love next door. While, while you entertain guests, oh yeah, all right, let me say that again. Um, treat your stuck or I can't thought or I can't do that thoughts in the same way you would treat a loud, a loud neighbor making love to his wife next door while you're trying to entertain guests. Just smile and ignore them. Thoughts turn to thinking. Thoughts turn to thinking when you give them attention. Thoughts are like bill collectors. They leave as soon as they see there's nobody home to pay them. Here's a fun bit of homework for you. Start to notice the feeling you have when you are stuck in I can't thoughts. Notice it and then get on with the rest of your day. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to change it. You don't have to fix it. You don't have to affirm it. Notice when you are giving a lot of meaning, feeling you're thinking, that's meaning, to the thoughts you are thinking. And after you notice, do nothing to change the feeling. It will change on its own, just like the weather. In other words, have you ever noticed that you go in and out of thinking all day long? You go in and out of thought all day long. Thought comes in, it's coming in to the radio, to the brain, it's like a big speaker somewhere, and you're the receiver. And you bring in all these thoughts and you grab a thought and you start thinking about it and you feel that, that thinking and you make meaning of that feeling. It's this, it's that, it's them, it's those, it's me, it's you know whatever it is, it's life. And when you start to just notice the I can't thoughts, I can't do that. Another question you can ask yourself, really great question to ask yourself, is that true? Is that really true? Do you really can't do that? Because when you start to really question what you can and you can't do, because if you ever had something in your life where you're like, there's no way I could do that, and then you did it. I remember one time I, 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 was, I was the backup speaker for this lady. She was started an organization. We started an organization together and um, called the Bright Heart Academy. It was, it was academy for children to teach them how to do improv, you know, improvisational, like acting. And it was a way to create balance, 
courage, confidence in the kids. And she was given this talk with uh, to these judges, doctors, lawyers, and all these highfalutin people. And the very morning that she was to give it, two hours before she was to give it, she called me and said, Dermot, I've got strep throat, I can't talk. You'll have to give the talk. Well, I fell on the ground. I thought there's no way in God's green earth that I'm gonna be able to give this talk. And I, I mean, I was sweating. I, I, I was close to taking a panic attack. I mean, it was horrible, 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 horrible. And I went in there and I gave the talk. And about 10 minutes in, I started to feel comfortable. And I started to have some fun and gave the talk. It wasn't as perfect as she would give it. Perfection is not needed to have a great life. And, um, and it went very well. And we ended up getting a bunch of money for the, for the Bright Heart Academy. So question that I can't. You don't have to change, say, oh, I can. Let me change that I can't to a can. It's got a question, is that really true? Like, can I really not do that? If I could do that, what help would I need? Who am I not asking for help? Who would I need to get me to, to, to support me in that? What's the meaning I'm making of this I can't? Is it true that I can't really do that? If I could do it, what would I do? Just pretend for a moment that I could do it. What would, where would I start? What's the very first small thing that I would do to move that project forward? What's the, what's the, the smallest doable little step that I already know how to do that I could do to move that forward? Where in my life am I not asking for help? Where in my, where in my life am, am I not showing up for myself? Where in my life am I using I can't? That's a great question. Where in my life am I, uh, am I using I can't? Because a lot of the times the I can't is just hiding. All right, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to leave it there today. I hope you've enjoyed the show. We'll be back next week with The Irishman's Guide, part three. We're going to be looking at uh, The Irishman's Guide to Not Being Broke or Poor for the Rest of Your Life. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be a really wonderful, wonderful show. Um, oh, actually, sorry, next week, November 20th, Stephen McGee is here. We're going to be talking about leadership. So stay tuned, 1 p.m. next Friday. Uh, here live on Facebook. Until then, check us out at thecelticcoach.com. We'll post all of these videos and more on YouTube, iTunes, just click in the Celtic Coach. You've been listening to 92.5 FM. And that, my dear friends, is no Blarney. Until the next time, think big, have fun, and stay curious. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for listening in. All the best.